trees. What are they? Hello, the 31st here. How's it going? I'm very glad you could join us today for a mystery. If you hadn't already guessed, this mystery is berry flavored. It's the mystery of the Alolan and Galarian berry trees and how slash why they have so many different types of berries on them. I will be talking about fruit quite a bit as well. Uh, that's because berries are fruit, so it's easy just to talk about the same. Yeah, they the same thing. From all the way back when wild berries were introduced in Generation 2 up to Generation 6, there wasn't too much change when it came to the berry formula. You find a tree, it has one type of berry on it, you pick that, and sometimes in some of the games you could then replant those berries and, you know, grow a new berry tree, which would again have that same species of berry on it. Now that's all pretty standard, right? But in Generation 7, they changed things up a bit, they rocked the status quo. Wild trees that have multiple different types of berries on them all at the same time. But how is that possible? Well, let's start right from the beginning. What is a fruit? Well, according to Google, the sweet and fleshy product of a tree or other plant that contains seed and that can be eaten as food. In biology or botany, it would be described as the ripened ovary of the flower enclosing the seeds. Now, fruit are great because it protects the seeds and it aids in their dispersal. Basically, if the fruit just falls to the ground and rots, then the seeds will get into the ground and they'll have some fertilizer. But the great thing about fruit is that they are tasty, right? So animals will eat them. They will then move somewhere. They will take the seeds somewhere else before pooping them out and providing the seeds some fertilizer and distance from the parent. And we know that berries are the exact same in Pokemon. Generation 2 to 6, separate berries come on separate trees, but in Generation 7, like I said, that changed, and in Gala and Alola, you'll find these trees with a whole bunch of different berries on. Well, one thing I know for sure is that it's unlikely to be some kind of genetic manipulation, because when you take the fruit that you get on these trees and plant them in the Poke Archipelago in Alola, they will make, you know, regular trees. So if you plant an orange berry, you will get an orange tree that produces orange berries and not a tree that produces a whole bunch of different fruit. That tells us that these fruit that drop from these multi-fruit trees are just the regular, you know, regular berries that we see everywhere else. So that leaves us with one option, and it's actually very, very simple, and it's done all over the world today, and that is grafting. It is actually really easy to make a tree with multiple different kinds of fruit on it. All you have to do is take the buds or branches from one tree make an incision on another tree and stick those bits into this second tree. As long as the vascular cells, so the xylem and the phloem, are similar enough to allow these donor bits of plant to get the water and nutrients they need from, you know, their host tree, it's not going to be any problem. Then these bits of tree you've, you know, grafted on are just going to grow as if they were part of the tree. Like I said, it's very simple and it's done all over the world today. Now, plants can do this because they don't have complicated immune systems. So they don't really have a way of recognizing uh, self, so self cells. You couldn't really do this with a human being, for example, or an animal. Our immune systems are way more complicated and specific. For like a transplant to be successful, the donor and the recipient need to be a match. They need to be very, very similar. And you usually also need to use some kind of immunosuppressant. Basically, because the human body, like I said, it can recognize cells and whether they belong to your body. And if your body starts to recognize, uh, you know, a transplanted organ, for example, as a foreign, potentially invading entity, then your immune system is going to attack it. And that is what we, you know, generally refer to as rejection uh, when it comes to an organ transplant. But like I said, plants, they, they don't have this issue. As long as the two plants are in the same species, or at least in the same genus, in fact, it's going to be very simple to do this kind of grafting. Like I said, the only limiting factor is going to be if the vascular cells of the donor and the recipient aren't similar enough to work together, the donor bits, the grafts, are not going to get the nutrients they need to actually develop, and they're just going to die. The most common example of this technique is probably uh, fruit salad trees. So, so trees that produce peaches, plums, nectarines, apricots and peach cots, as these fruits are all the same species. It's also very popular to do this with citrus trees, as like I said, they're, they're very closely related as well. The most famous and impressive example of this is Van Asken's Tree of 40 Fruits, which produces 40 different types of fruit from the genus Prunus. 
So the theory is basically that in Gala and Alola, the natural barrier trees have been replaced by grafted multi-fruit trees. Maybe because not all the different types of berry can grow in these different kinds of environments. For example, in Alola, the berry trees are all palm trees. Maybe no other sorts of berry trees can grow in these environments. Uh, in fact, in Hoenn, there is some shit. And I mean, there is some precedence for this. I mean, in X and Y, there is one route where you can grow berries. And I believe in Unova, you can't plant berry trees at all if there are any in the wild. And alternatively, it might just be for convenience. As for who does this and why, my guess is as good as yours, to be honest. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. You know, I guess Mallow and Milo would probably be a good place to start, as they're the grass type leaders of their respective regions. Another thing that also makes me think it's not like a genetic thing, it's not uh, some kind of, of special breeding or genetic manipulation that makes these trees. In X and Y, when you plant specific different types of berry trees next to one another, they have the chance of making hybrid berries, so mutant berries. Again, Game Freak, Pokemon, mutant is not the right word here. They're hybrids, um, they're like crossbred variations which produce hybrid berries, so please stop using the word mutation for everything. It's really annoying. It is the product of sexual reproduction, not genetic mutation. But yeah, welcome to the end of the video. Uh, thanks for watching if you're still here. But yeah, do all the YouTube things, like, comment, subscribe. 90% of you are not subscribed. So if you're new around here, please do that. And if you're new around here and have subscribed, welcome. There's been a whole lot of you recently signing up. And uh, I'm very happy to have everyone on board. I uh, hope you like this sort of stuff. Uh, this was something I hadn't thought about at all. The berries have been like this for like three years now. And I hadn't put any thought into it until just the other day when I was like, that's super weird. And it reminded me of A-level biology where we learned about grafting. I mean, that was, oh shit, that was like six, seven years ago I did A-level. Oh god, I'm old. All right, thank you for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Goodbye.